رانا مبشر آپ کی خدمت میں حاضر آج گفتگو کریں گے اس شخص سے جو محترمہ بے نظیر بھٹو کے ساتھ انہوں نے بہت اچھا ٹائم گزارا لابسٹ ہیں پاکستان کے امریکہ میں کولمبیا یونیورسٹی میں اسپیچ رائٹنگ اور اسپیچ پریزنٹیشن پڑھاتے ہیں جمی کارٹر کے ساتھ وائٹ ہاؤس میں رہ چکے ہیں تقریباً دو سال ان کے ساتھ گزارا اور تقریباً پچیس سال پہلے ایک ڈنر ہوسٹ کیا انہوں نے محترمہ بے نظیر بھٹو کے لیے انہوں نے اور ان کی وائف نے کوریشین امبیسڈر ان کے ساتھ تھے کتاب لکھنے میں ہیلپ آؤٹ کیا محترمہ بے نظیر بھٹو کو ریکنسیلیشن اسلام ڈیموکریسی اینڈ دی ویسٹ مارک سیگل جی ہائے مارک ہاؤ یو آئی ایم گڈ آئی ایم گڈ You hosted a dinner for Benazir Bhutto, some like, something like 25 years back, right? Yes, in 1984, after, after she was uh, released from uh, prison by the al hmm. So, at that time, what did you think of her? Interesting question. Um, a friend of mine had asked uh, my wife and I to, uh, to have a dinner for a friend who was coming out of prison. It's not usual often that you get a request to host a dinner party for someone who's coming out of prison. So it was, uh, it was uh, quite an interesting request, and he explained who she was, and we were, um, we were happy to put it together, and it was an interesting party. We had a senator and a congressman and some press there. Um, ben is there at that time. She was very young. She was quite fragile. She had just gotten out of... Uh, Uh, detention. Um, she had a uh, very, very bad ear infection, which was, I think, the principal reason that Zia allowed her out to the West for, for treatment. So she wasn't in good physical condition. Um, emotionally, she um, obviously was scarred from all the years in detention, um, most of it in solitary confinement. Um, but when she started talking, um, she was very, very engaging. She spoke very softly. Um, and she seemed very shy at the outset, but she seemed to blossom almost like a flower, and um, people were quite taken with her. And um, by, the, by the end of the uh, three-hour dinner, um, people really thought that she was extraordinary. Hmm. So when did you guys become friends, you know? Well, actually, starting at, uh, at that dinner, I mean, we, uh, we bonded, um, and uh, no one was taking... Uh, Or taking care of her interests in Washington at the time, and and she asked me if uh, if I would just look at, out after uh, her interests and the party's interests. Of course, there were no fees or anything involved. I was just doing it as a friend. So I I said I would be happy to do that. And um, I also at that point started working with her on speeches, on writing, and presentation. And that was something that uh, went on for the for the next twenty twenty five years. And it was a very I think rewarding experience for me. The, the, the longer we knew each other, the better we knew each other. The easier it was to write write for her. And uh, by the uh, you know by the by by the middle or the end of of those years, uh, I, she was finishing my sentences and I was finishing her sentences. I mean, we were we were very uh, w- uh, we were thinking and, and working and writing uh, uh, together in a in a really very professional way and. Uh, I think that was also what made it very easy to work together on uh, on the on the book Reconciliation mm-hmm. and also the updating of the uh, autobiography Daughter of the East which we did earlier in the year of 2007. So during this all this all these years did you see like any change in her personality? Yes, um, you know over 25 years we all change, we all develop. She certainly became more confident. Um, as a public speaker, she she became truly extraordinary. You know, a, a riveting speaker. Um, and you know, the more she the more she uh, spoke around the world, uh, I think the better and more confident she became. Um, of all the people I've ever worked with in speech writing and speech presentation, she was by far the best. And I've worked with uh, people uh, who were uh, by 
presidents and senators and uh, pri other prime ministers, but uh, no one really compared to her and her ability um, in, in making a speech and conveying a message. Um, she also, you know, as she became um, older and more mature, she became very pragmatic. Um, she understood uh, things that could be done quickly, things that couldn't be done quickly. She she understood sort of incremental change, um, evolutionary change. Even when you want revolutionary change, sometimes you have to go step by step. Um, so I think she she matured as uh, as a person, as a, as a woman, as a leader. She also, you know, during that time in, uh, in 1988, she um, she um, married in 87. She married Asif Ali Zadari and became a mother of three children. And that certainly is is something that changed her um, over the years as well. Um, at the end, um, in that last year, uh, in 2007, where we worked very very closely together on, on the book, she was um, determined. She was confident. Um, she was optimistic. Uh, she really thought that um, she was going to return home and um, and lead uh, the Pakistan People's Party, but also the democratic forces of of, uh, of Pakistan to a very strong victory in the elections that were then scheduled for for early January of 2008. Um, and I, um, you know, we spoke uh, right up until the morning of her uh, her assassination and. Uh, she was um, again very confident, very strong, and very optimistic. Very optimistic. Hmm. Mark, what was your reaction? Your first reaction, because till the morning you were like talking to her, right? And yes. when you heard this news about her assassination, what was yeah. your reaction? Well, you know, it. Um, we um, we sp had spoken so often through the years about the um, the physical dangers um, and she made it absolutely clear that you know a long time ago is that she had made the fundamental decision um, she uh, the first line of the of the autobiography that you know, we redrafted in in 2007 it begins with the line I didn't choose this life it chose me um, so she fundamentally believed that her first responsibility in life was, was to the people of Pakistan, more so than to her uh, her own children, to her own husband, to her own personal happiness, and even her own personal safety. She was a woman of deep faith. She thought she was in the hands of God, and uh, he would protect her. And um, if something happened to her, um, that too would be, you know, be his wish. Um, and uh, when I when I heard what happened, um, obviously, as someone who was very close to her, my my wife and I were absolutely um, stunned, and you know we um, very rattled and obviously cried and heartbroken. Um, and then um, I uh, I had to deal with the American American press, and then. I uh, again realized that she had sent me uh, instructions on actually what to do if something happened to her, God forbid.